going to go to. So in chapter 12, um, basically, you know, previously we were sort of um, using all the apples, like um, uh, combine, you know, because Apple went and updated a bunch of their um, APIs and uh, to support uh, combine and publishing. So, you know, when we met network calls, the NSURL session now has a publisher, all of that. Um, but this chapter kind of talks about, well, how about if you are interfacing with some third party um, service that doesn't as you know, doesn't have a, um, a combined publisher, but for the rest of your app, you want to enable that because you think that's a better way to be getting events. And how do you do that? So um, we of course know that Peter works for Firebase. So it wasn't a surprise that he would be kind of illustrating um, uh, how like, you know, he's taken some Firebase APIs and, you know, uh, wrapped a, a kind of publisher around them that a combined publisher that now he uses oops, in his app. Um, so he talks about like Firestore. I don't know if any of you have used Firestore before. Um, in our, you know, in the apps that I've worked on, several of them we have used um, Firebase. One uh, popular, I mean, there's a bunch of uh, sort of services you can use, but um, Firestore is kind of like a back end cloud store. So you can like be saving things and then um, other people can be saving things and then you get updated when there's an update to any of the documents that you've saved there. Um, so uh, usually, um, you know, it's, uh, it's kind of like you can imagine it's like a document store. So you have like a, the, a collection like he's showing here with, um, like books, and then you get documents, and um, you get a certain snapshot of that, you know, current um, list of documents, and then you can do things with it. So this is kind of the closure way that I think most people kind of deal with backend services. So, you know, you're making a call, it's asynchronous, it's going to take some time. But then you get a callback and then in the callback, you know, you're taking whatever you have, which in here is documents, and then you're kind of passing it through. Um, there is also this concept of a snapshot listener, because the main thing is like, and again, this, you know, um, previously, uh, we would just do one network call, you know, and then we're getting some results back. And then that was it. Um, so, uh, the way we kind of like did that whole username validator thing was, you know, user types, you know, um, information, you know, the, the username itself is a publisher. So we're getting updates and then, um, we're calling, you know, we're passing this to the, you know, the network NSURL session publisher and then it goes and makes this network call and we get a result back and you know and uh in this case you know for firestore you kind of set up this listener because the whole idea is that this is in the cloud and there could be multiple people like saving and updating things in that cloud and that snapshot listener kind of lets you know when there's updates um so you're constantly getting or whenever there's an update, you're getting um, a new result. And in this case, then, you know, um, uh, uh, there is a sample application. I have to be honest that I didn't have time to run the sample application. Although I've ran a bunch of Firebase projects before. So I don't know if you guys have, has anyone done it like a Firebase tutorial or a sample app? 
Okay. Yeah. So it's it's kind of fun. So you you go to their dashboard and you kind of set up your um, app ID and and then you get this Google service info P list um, that um, down because you know the client SDK needs to know what your app is and how it's a, you know uh, how to connect to it in the cloud and um, I've actually never ran a Firebase emulator suite the local so that might be cool to try um, later on but but anyway so there is a sample app for the stuff that he's kind of covering um, but then you know he's now talking about like, okay, so how do we use combine to access Firestore? And here he has this, you know, this is kind of, you know, Firestore is, you know, some data store in the cloud. You know, you have here um, a view model that your um, Swift UI list view depends on, you know, and this is a common sort of pattern that you see with MVVM where you have the view model, you have a list of books, and then you can like subscribe to this view model. Um, the books is kind of the published um, property so that, you know, as it changes, you will get, you know, you can basically show the updated books in your list view. Um, so, uh, you know, and then another thing is you have this kind of an error message, which also like if, for instance, there's some issue with, you know, getting something from the Firestore, you also want to display the error. Um, and, you know, uh, here um, you have like uh, the Firestore, you know, that's how we're connect, you know, we're creating a local Firestore um, object. And then we have this listener registration that's kind of that snapshot listener that we talked about. Um, so that when you call subscribe on this view model, if it didn't already create a, this kind of a listener, uh, you know, snapshot listener, then it goes and creates that. And then basically um, anytime that you get um, updated, you know, uh, there's a new snapshot, then you basically, and the way it kind of works is that every time there is an update, you do get that entire um, document set. It's not like you need to deal with, oh, okay, these are the new ones and I just add that. You kind of get that entire um, document. So you can just set your books to this new um, list um, that you got there. Um, and um, uh, so here, like, you know, um, if it is like successful from that, and, and this, again, with all these things, you know, you're sort of integrating with a third party. So with Firebase, basically, you know, um, when um, there is a snapshot return, um, you first try to see, oh, can I get the data um, from it? You know, if you can, you know, and they have their own kind of a result type. If it's a successful result, then, you know, basically you get um, a book back. Um, and, and um, uh, you know, you return a book. Um, otherwise, you know, you're, you know, you failed, you get an error message and then you're just setting your error message. Um, and basically when it's doing this compact map, it's going through, um, uh, you know, each of the snapshots and getting it as a book and then updating. Um, at the end, you're gonna have a list of books because you can imagine just JSON or return that's gonna be an array of these book items. And that kind of works well so that, you know, the nice thing is your Swift UI code doesn't know anything about Firestore or whatever. Um, and it just, you know, you have that published books 
you know, so anytime is changing, the, you know, Swift UI, um, the book list is going to change. Um, and then you're just basically hooking up these books um, to, uh, you know, and this, you know, this kind of thing is pretty much the kind of the least integrated with actually like, you know, so here we didn't really create a combined publisher. It, I mean, obviously, um, uh, Swift UI uses, you know, combined to be able to, you know, kind of subscribe to these, you know, entities. Um, but, you know, pretty much we did, you know, as part of the subscribe, we just use the, you know, the, the sort of the old fashioned, you know, create this listener, have a closure, you know, uh, get the results and then map it to our um, property. Any question so far about like how he went about doing this? All good. I, I don't know if I'm looking and there seems to be no information on chat too. So we're good. Um, you know, and here um, he, you know, we're seeing, and this is always to me part of like even reading this book. And now that I'm doing more Swift UI, is just getting more comfortable. Oh, there's one question. Will you describe how the subscribe process works? Yes. Yeah, so this subscribe, like, so this subscribe, let's make sure we're not confusing that with the, um, so this is a method on the view model. So this subscribe is not like a combined subscribe or anything. It's just that, and maybe it's good to kind of look at. So let's, let's say we're, we created this list view and he, he explicitly calls it list view with closures because, you know, we didn't really go and make a new um, combined publisher based on this Firestore thing. So we're still kind of make, you know, setting up a listener with um, Firestore and then passing a closure, getting these, you know, um, uh, snapshots and converting it. But uh, the main thing is that when you call subscribe on your view model, you know, and, and you notice that we're doing it on a peer so that when this list view first shows up, that's when we're going to go to our view model and call subscribe and subscribe all it does. And this part would have been um, exactly how you would have done it without using combine. You know, you would go and you know, set up a snapshot listener. And then every time your closure gets called, when there's like a new snapshot and you're just parsing through the snapshot. The slightly combined -esque part of this is that we do have, you know, um, and we pretty much kind of get this free, you know, these books and error message from the view model is something that once we change their values because they're published, and this all happens underneath, you're not doing anything extra. Anytime these change and, you know, your, um, your Swift UI view is um, depending on these, then basically, um, you know, uh, it will like if this changes, then this whole list will change, you know, and it just again goes back to you know the Swift UI reacts to changes to state changes. So you know if I was gonna go and write a Swift UI, let's say initially I had UI kits and I just had a table view of these books, then all I would be doing is just you know. Again, I would go and, you know, subscribe to this um, snapshot listener, but with the books, you know, I would just like, you know, um, do a table view reload and then, you know, um, redraw my cells. In, in the case of Swift UI, we don't, again, directly go re-render things. So it has to react to something. So once we say that, this books, you know, can change, then it just does that. Let me just read the, yeah, so yeah. Uh, 
what uh, where does the redraw render happen in the code so with swift ui you don't explicitly re-render it's the swift ui engine so when you say that this view model is a state object it means that its state could change and when you go here in the view model and for its properties you you put this publish which is a um, property wrapper that kind of lets the swift ui um engine know that oh so these can change you know and um we will be observing them so as part of observing if they change then the swift ui engine itself goes and re-renders and it reacts to that so you're not explicitly and that's kind of we discussed this before that you know that's the big you know, difference that we don't explicitly go and, um, you know, ren you know, re-render anything. It just reacts to these changes. Let's see. Okay. And then there's another question. How do you know you're not using combine in the syntax? You are, well, you know, I mean, the, in this case, the view model we're using combine because this add published you know, is a combine um, uh, concept or you know supported by combine. So um, you know, but uh, but we're not you know we're just kind of it's kind of almost creating its own little publisher. But you don't have to explicitly go and set it up. So anytime you change this property you know, underneath it, it will go and uh, anyone who's subscribing to this books, which the Swift UI is by just, you know, saying that this is a, you know, uh, that the view model is a state object and any of its properties, if it's published, it'll get updated. And then there's another way. Basically when we set a property like publish, yeah. We'll redraw. Yes, that's right, uh, Jacoma. It's kind of cool. I mean, it's definitely um, really makes the development a lot easier because with UI Kit, it was just more tedious to do some of this. But you know, of course, it comes with its own caveats. Um, yeah. So. The next part is, so, so far in this example, that's like the first kind of mini step. So you have this Firebase, Firestore thing, you're like, you know, you create this view model, you make, you know, its properties, you know, publish so that if any changes to them happen, your Swift UI will react to it. And then you just like did the whole, you know, subscribe to that listener and then, you know, update. Um, now let's say that, you know, instead of just implementing the, um, uh, the publisher protocol yourself, like we did, you know, the publish thing, we actually want to create our own publisher so that, you know, we, um, somewhere else in the code, we're basically subscribing to this publisher, which in turn, is you know getting stuff from the Firestore, uh, and this is where he kind of adds um, a, sort of a new uh, kind of a um, class for um, uh, combine, and this is like a pass through subject, and we'll understand why he's using that in a second but it does have the send thing. So we'll understand why the send thing is kind of important. Um, so let's see, you know, so here he talks about how you can, you know, basically use the pass through subject to wrap the snapshot listener. So let's go back to, um, uh, okay. Now, again, if we go back to, you know, with Apple, once they had combined, they went in like, you know, updated a lot of their um, APIs to support this whole publishing thing. Um, you know, Firestore doesn't have it at, you know, when he's showing this example, 
but there is this kind of a query interface for um, um, on the client side for Firestore, you know, this, um, uh, you know, there's collection reference is a query. And then what we could do is we can go and add our own kind of like snapshot publisher. Uh, and then he shows how you can do that. So that at that point, instead of me going and doing that whole closure thing um, with the snapshot listener, I would just be using the snapshot publisher. It itself, of course, will be setting up a listener and whatever, but I, I wouldn't be using that um, directly. So here, you know, we it, basically there's this um, new method, you know, snapshot publisher, um, and then it returns, you know, our you know favorite any publisher, and then it's re returning a snapshot and, and possibly an error. And inside it, it goes and adds a snapshot listener, just kind of like what we did before, right? And of course, um, anytime there is a snapshot, this closure will be called. You know, that's here. Oops. Yeah. And then he starts populating, okay, what goes into this closure? Um, so um, we first create this pass-through subject. Um, because that itself is um, a publisher that can actually um, send information. You can imagine that you can give it some information, it send it, and whoever is basically subscribed to this publisher will get it. So here, you know, we do our usual ad snapshot listener in the closure, we're going to get a snapshot. We're going to use the subject to send the snapshot through, and we're going to see that. And at the end, you know, remember we always erase to any publisher so that we just make it be just a simple any publisher without like all the different um, uh, classes or you know um, object references that it can have that makes it complicated to. Um, uh, should you know uh, specify the type okay so let's go here so yeah so it creates a this pass through subject um then it's you know this add snapshot listener is a call on query so whenever we're just extending it it can just call it you know um and then here we get a snapshot if there is an error we're gonna send um through the subject, you know, okay, there was a failure. So we just return the error. Otherwise, there is a snapshot, and then we just send the snapshot. Um, yeah, and then the one thing um, that he mentions, so this kind of looks good. So from now on, I don't have to go and remember how we did before where we went and um, did this whole, uh, it was here, you know, did this, um, you know, created a query snapshot, or where was it, you know, created this, um, you know, call this uh, add snapshot to my DB collection. You don't have to do that. Um, you could, but instead of adding a snapshot listener now, this DB collection is that, you um, uh, collection reference that now we're extending, but instead of adding a listener and doing the closure, it will actually be, and we'll see it, there will be the snapshot publisher that we're just like subscribing to. Um, and the one thing he mentions that, you know, um, if, you know, we showed how we send the error in the snapshot, um, if like, you know, um, this uh, publisher is like, you know, canceled or it's gonna be closed, then we wanna make sure that, you know, um, we actually like um, remove the listener, we clean up uh, properly. Um, and that's kind of what he was mentioning here. It's like, um, but how can we store and manage the snapshot listener handle inside the snapshot publisher? Turns out that we can, because you, you need to clean up properly. Um, and this listener handle is part of this, you know, uh, uh, the query. 
that you know you need to make sure that if we add a snapshot listener and there's a listener handle, we remove it when um, this publisher is going to be canceled. It's close closing now. And then let's go back. So you're like, okay, so much stuff. Like, so how does this kind of look? So back to our book list um, view model, um, because that's where all the changes are. We still have this books published. We still have our error message. We still create this fire store, right? Um, there's this any cancelable that we're going to go over. Um, cancelable is something that when you create a publisher, um, it is um, part of the whole combined thing is that you should be able at any point to cancel the publishing of the events, but you need a handle to that um, publisher that you created so that you can be able to cancel it. And that's why there's cancelable gets set. And here, it's just like how it was previously. So we have the snapshot, you know, we do this try and map. Remember we use try and map when we want to actually like catch the error. Um, so here, like, you know, we'll try doing, because even when we get a query snapshot, um, you know, there's times when we may not be able to actually, you know, parse it properly. Um, so we want to make sure that, you know, it, because if you don't catch it properly, the whole thing will just stop publishing. So we want to make sure that once we get the error, in this case, you know, we're just saying, okay, you know, for some reason we're going to parse it, we'll just return an empty book. Or, you know, it may just be that, you know, we don't do the replace error, but we'll return some other intelligible error that we're going to show the user. And then if, if, if they receive, if they're canceling it, we just want to show print cancel. And this is kind of, he's, I mean, in a real code, we may not want to put print cancel, but here just to see, okay, the, something got canceled we, or we log it. And otherwise then it's like, you know, if it went through and it could, you know, um, it could get the, the book, then, you know, basically, um, you know, it is calling the compact map. So we will get a list of books and here it's just assigning it to books. Um, which we have, remember, here. So it's a lot shorter and, you know, it is kind of, you know, that whole subscription. It's truly, this is, you know, using a publisher to subscribe. While, you know, previously we were using the listener and the closure. Any questions about that? Let me just go and catch up. Um, cancelable, yeah. Some good notes here, Sherry, good job. Any questions besides like the logic here? Um, so this is kind of a nice, you know, a way, um, you know, it may not be that you guys have Firestore, but you do have some back end where you are getting updates all the time and you're sort of, you know, wrapping your publisher and using this, you know, um, uh, pass through subject, you know, to be able to make a call to that service, get the updates, and then pass it through this pass through subject, which is itself a publisher. And then anyone could just be subscribing to that publisher and doesn't have to you know, know anything about, again, is this whole thing that you don't want to deal with the whole me messy closure, or whatever, because all you want to do, and this is kind of where it's, you know, all you want to do is just get books. And this allows you to just get your books updated and you don't have to do all the um, other messy stuff yourself. Um, okay. And then he throws another concept too. Um, so he's like, uh, and they're single once and you see an example of this. So he says, sometimes, you know, it, um, uh, you know, you don't um, want to 
um, keep getting these real time updates like we did before with that whole um, uh, real time snapshots. You just want to do a one time, you know, um, one time on demand. Like I, now I need some documents. I just want to go and get that. And the reason that's a little like um, tricky is that, you know, with the with the listener thing that we did is like, you know, it's anytime any, you know, we registered listener and we got some snapshot, then we would call this pass through subject and send it. In, in this case, you know, we may, you know, say request to the Firestore, okay, I want to have like the documents. But it will take some time to get those documents back sometime in the future. <laughs> I'm using future because that's kind of the concept. And it's like a one time thing. So sometime in the future, I'm going to get a response and I'm just going to return that. So here um, uh, he talks about, you know, future is a publisher that eventually produces a single value and then finishes or fails. So this is like a one-time thing, but it's sometime in the future. You know, you don't get it um, right. You know, um, like not right away. So, it, and that that's not surprising because if you think of also like you know when we were doing that URL session task, you know, which the publisher was provided by Apple, that's kind of like also a single value that it's returning, and then it's sometime in the future and then, you know, either, you know, finishes us or it fails. So in this case, you know, we have like, um, we just want to get one document. Um, and again, if we're wrapping this combined thing, we wanted to return a future publisher, um, which is very clear that it's a one-time thing in the future. And then he, uh, let me make sure there's like, yeah, this is good. Um, so here, uh, a lot of concepts get thrown. So here we have a future. And actually, if anyone has done React or programming like on JavaScript, like Node stuff, you know, this is not totally uncommon concepts. Um, you know, a lot of times with even network calls, like, you know, you're um, making a call in the future, you're going to get um, a response. And we kind of, I mean, he's just naming it promise, but it's usually that's kind of you're getting a promise of a result back. Um, and once you get that result, you know, you can then, you know, in this case, like, um, get the um the source um so let's see and he's kind of filling it in so um so here um we had uh okay so when you say future there's gonna be um some there's a sometime you know we're gonna be returning this response and then basically, um, and this is kind of where the funky thing is that we go and get the document, you know, again, this document is asynchronous call. Sometime in the future, <laughs> this closure gets called, a snapshot is returned. And then, you know, we are gonna pass. So in, in a sense, it's kind of like, this is waiting until something happens, you know, with the publisher. And then we are passing in whether, oh, if there was an error, we're passing that. Otherwise, if there was a snapshot, we pass that. And the nice thing about it is that, you know, this kind of indicates, you know, to, to the combined, you know, engine that this um, uh, call is something that's gonna take some time. It's gonna be asynchronous and when it, um, you know, it, it's going to keep that, you know, whatever pipe, you know, going until there's a promise of a result. And then, you know, we're going to pass in whatever the result is. Um, now, if you go and look at your book list view model, 
you know, there's like, um, it doesn't look very different from how we had it before. Um, I, of course, in this case, it's just like um, a specific book that we were retrieving. So, you know, um, here's a book. Initially, it's book empty is, you know, we don't, um, uh, we don't have a book set yet. Um, then we're fetching the book. Um, and um, as part of the fetch, we're doing this, you know, get document. And that's like a future publisher. And at some point, there'll be a result. And then we do our whole try map thing. And then if there was some issue, we're just going to return an empty book. Again, when you're doing your thing, you may decide, you know, based on all the error handling stuff that we did before, maybe it should return an error and we should capture that. But in this case, you know, it's just um, assigning it um, to the book. Um, and if it's, there's an error, it's just going to be an empty book. And, um, and it's like a one-time thing. And that's where future is a good way, um, a future publisher to create a future publisher is perfect for this thing because it's like a one-time thing. And sometime in the future, you're gonna get the result. So um, yeah, there's like, I would suggest um, if you're um, basically, playing around with this, that, you know, you go through the sample app that they have, if you have some time, you know, and it's kind of fun. So in Firebase, you know, go in the console, set it up. I haven't done that yet. So I'm going to try to do that this weekend to see like, okay, how easy it is to do. I, I just basically read the chapter. Um, uh, I think, uh, you know, what I had told Navadi that once, you know, so next week we're doing chapter 13. After that, there's so much concepts that, you know, we've, um, you know, sort of come, you know, like have, you know, learned and try to understand. So we're going to do a, a, a project where, you know, um, a weather app where we're going to take this weather API that, you know, again, it's kind of a, like a one-time thing that returns the, um, the um, weather information for a location. And this would be a great sort of, you know, exercise to kind of put, you know, so um, a, traditionally we were just doing this weather app we'll be calling the API, having that closure, uh, you know, updating this thing, but we're gonna actually go to the practice of saying, oh, can we actually follow what he had done? And, you know, um, in this case, like we'll just create this future publisher, you know, and have the result and just to get some practice on doing it. And, you know, honestly for um, something like the kind of example he gives, you know, that closure thing with just having that published, you know, properties might be good enough for what you're doing. So it's not like, oh, you have to like even wrap that into a, a publisher and whatever. But for, you know, but I think he was trying to use this as an example that for, for some other things, if it's really gnarly, I mean, there is a lot of uh, massaging that has to happen. Um, then, you know, um, it may make sense, you know, or you're trying to provide this publisher to other parts in the app, not just one, you know, then it may be nice to then go and actually create a real publisher around your service um, so that people don't uh, could just subscribe to whatever event or data that your publisher is sending. And that's good enough. Questions? And uh, I think in the um, Slack channel, I did um, share like some resources. There is this um, YouTube channel with this um, developer and she's kind of going through combined to, and I thought I'm actually been watching a couple of the videos. I, I need to watch more. Uh, it's kind of nice while you're reading the book to also watch 
how she's teaching combined because it kind of settles more in my brain and she's good at actually describing things. Um, so, um, you know, sometimes it is nice to use multiple resources to understand, but it's kind of one of those things that, you know, either at your work, they're just going to decide they're going to do combine and then hence, you know, reading up on all this is good. Or, you know, you're going to be working on some personal project and you want to get better at it. Like your current app is not doing it, but, you know, um, potentially doing a bunch of, you know, projects to play around with it is a good way to learn. Um, because I kind of feel like just reading the book is not enough. I mean, you, you, you get some of these concepts, but until like, you know, you're actually typing code, it's hard to understand that. Uh, let me keep up with the chat. Yeah. Oh, more questions. Chapter 13. Yeah. Uh, what tech, uh, what tech do you need to get started? You know, um, Sherry, can you, uh, okay. And then, a pro okay. That was your, um, so, um, yeah, I mean, there's, a lot of um, tutorials that you can look at where people kind of show how Combine is being used. Um, tech stack is mainly, you know, um, if you're just using, um, if you just start a new, like, um, it doesn't even have to be a Swift UI project, you know, even a UI kit, um, Combine is included as part of the frameworks uh, um, when you start any like iOS project. So you could just import combine and start doing these. So, so it's pretty easy to get started. That YouTube channel that I was mentioning that's in the, um, uh, for our um, uh, channel thing that we go through all this, um, she uses a playground and then she just goes through some of the combined, you know, just the basic stuff before we put in the app, which was kind of helpful too. I kind of did that. Any other questions or anything? I know we're kind of a little early, but it was a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah, the iOS study circle. This is what happens if I don't drink enough um, coffee. Um, but yeah, ch check out that channel because we've put some, you know, references to things. Um, and then, you know, with this book, there's also GitHub. Um, so, and, and that's in that channel, the uh, iOS study circle. So you can kind of look at, you know, his sample apps too, because that helps. Anyhow, yeah, nobody, any so questions from you? <laughs> um, I couldn't keep up with this chapter. So I mean, uh, I'm glad like this is really helpful. I can, you know, learn some of the concepts before I actually sit down with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, this was a, yeah, this was a lot of uh, <laughs> new concepts. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I kind of feel now that, you know, um, I, I'm looking at it like it's actually, I mean, there's no one perfect book because there's like books about just combine, you know, because it has a lot of, you know, different things. Although like it may seem a little overwhelming, but I think at the end, you know, people, you know, depends how, how, how far you use it. And, you know, and again, with Swift UI and allowing this whole published, you know, a property wrapper, they're kind of like, making combine a little easier because you know just making these properties uh published and just updating their values anything that's kind of um observing them will just get updated so that's kind of the easiest path and you know the next path is writing your own publisher which is what he's kind of going through um yeah yeah this doing this project will be really helpful you know just to and it'll be interesting context, like yeah. Once we're done with this and then we do that part three, which is why he, you know, the async and await was, I think, an, another way for Apple to go, well, you know, 
for some things, maybe you just, you know, um, you just kind of have to let the system know that, you know, again, the nice thing about the reason, one reason for the combined thing was that, you know, with the closure, like you have to actually pass the closure, you don't get a result back, you know, it's like, in your closure, you have to like, do these things and set things. So one nice thing was, you know, if you could just assign the result from your publisher, then it's much a cleaner sort of integration. And then, you know, I think Apple like even pushed more on that direction, like not through combined, but from another, you know, even when you have a, like a, a legacy thing to make it easier. It's like, okay, I'm calling this, but I'm letting the system know it's asynchronous. And then at some point I get a response back and then I can, so it's it just trying to make a lot of these, you know, we have so much code where we're just like um, calling things and then there's all these closures and then you can have multiple things that could depend on each other. Um, Oh, how do we access the book? So you can buy the book, Sherry. Yeah, from, um, and I think we have a link for that too in the um, iOS study guide where you can get it from the um, publisher. And I use the PDF, but you can also get the um, hard copy. You know, I kind of like to highlight the PDF so different people like different things. But yeah, if you want to support the author too, that would be nice. Yeah, and then go through this. And then you can watch our recordings, you know, for every chapter. Yeah. All right. Okay, well, we can have a early, oh, what's the link? Is it on the Slack? Yes. And if you can't find it, feel free to Slack me, Sherry, and I'll, I'll give you the, the, the link. But, um, but anyways, um, uh, so... We'll have an early departure. I actually have like a, a 9.30, a four hour HR event. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, um, all right. So I'll talk to you. Need a lot of coffee yes. <laughs> to get through the day. A lot of coffee. On a Friday night. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so the plan is to do the next chapter and then the- And then the project. project. Yeah. Great. Okay. Yeah. Just so that, you know, I mean, we could plow through and go to part three, but I kind of feel like with all the stuff we did, yeah, it yeah, might be to, to do to do the project yeah. and then go through the project as a, yeah, and have everyone yeah. try it. Yeah, yeah that really helps. Yeah, yeah for sure. um, Thank you. Thank you so much, folks, for joining. I mean, this is great. Like, uh, I'm so happy that we, you know, have so many you still, you know, continuing and like um, learning together. That's really, really. Yeah, no, I think that's the best way to learn and kind of motivate each other. So it's um, yeah, and Monica, you're a great teacher. You. Oh, <laughs> really? I don't know. I'm just kind of reading off. This is really, really helpful. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. All right. See you guys. Yeah. Bye. Take care. Thank you so much. See you then. Bye. See you.